The original Constitution did not grant suffrage or the right to vote to women. During the early 1900s, women's associations became militant as thousands marched and demonstrated in cities across the country. Known as the suffragettes, their hard work resulted in the 19th Amendment being passed in 1920, granting to all American women the Susan right to B. vote. Susan Anthony took a stand for woman suffrage in many different ways. She spoke out about the 15th Amendment. She became a social reformer and public speaker and she fought her whole life for woman suffrage. On February 15, 1820, Susan B. Anthony was born to Daniel Anthony and Lucy Reed in Adams, Massachusetts. She was the second oldest of seven children. When she was six, her family moved to Battenville, New York. After spending 11 years there, they sent her to a Quaker boarding school. She did not like it there. But after a term, she was forced to leave because her family went broke in the panic of 1837. They had to sell all of their stuff. In 1846, she moved to Kanahohari and was headmistress of the Kanahohari Academy. There, she got interested in social reform and was mad that she was being paid less than men with similar jobs. In 1849, the academy closed. Her dad had asked her to come back home and take over the family farm because she was trying to develop her, his own business. Reformers Frederick Douglass, William Lloyd Garrison, and Wendell Phillips visited her father to help him. The discussions they had, Susan B. Anthony listened to, helped form her strong views on woman's suffrage and temperance. In 1851, she met Elizabeth Cady Stanton at an anti-slavery meeting in Seneca Falls, New York. In 1852, Susan B. Anthony attended the first women's rights convention. A year later, she went to the state teachers convention. There she worked on women to be admitted to the professions and for those teachers to get higher pay. Susan B. Anthony never got married. When people asked her why, she would always say, it always happened that men I wanted were those I could not have, and, and these who wanted me, I could never have. She took a stand for women's suffrage by becoming a social reformer and public speaker. She made a speech called Woman's Rights to the Suffrage on a Friday night at Union Hall. She said, It was the people, not we the white male citizens, nor yet we the male citizens, but we the whole people who formed it not to give blessing of liberty, but to secure them, not to the half of ourselves and the half of our posterity, but to the whole people, woman as well as men. The speech helped people to recognize woman's suffrage and why she is trying to give women the right to vote. The court took her case of public opinion to potential jurors. She had also tested legality voting rights by registering to vote, but she ended up being prosecuted and fined $100. Susan B. Anthony refused to pay it. She had to go to court because she would not pay the money. But the court came back in her favor. The event rallied supporters of women's suffrage across the country. During that time, the New York State of Married Women's Pro Property and Gover Guardianship Law gave married women in New York more property rights. Susan B. Anthony helped with that. She was so proud, her first accomplishment. She also took a stand in history by fighting her whole life by fighting her whole life for women's suffrage. In 1869, Elizabeth Cady Stan and Susan B. Anthony founded the NWSA, National Women's Suffrage Association. She was the president of it. When she was younger, she attended a temperance rally in Albany, New York. She was not allowed to speak because she was a woman. She got very mad about that and she created a weekly newsletter with Elizabeth Cady Stanton called The Revolution. 
telling people about women's suffrage and equal rights. It helped spread the news about what was going on with women's suffrage. When the newspaper went bankrupt, Susan B. Anthony spent six years raising money by giving lectures to pay the newspaper's $10,000 debt. During that time, the Civil War had just started. Susan B. Anthony wanted to end slavery, so she organized the National Women's Suffrage Loyal League. They gathered petitions to end slavery. Another way she took a stand for women's suffrage was by sp- was by speaking out about the 15th Amendment. The 15th Amendment gave African American the right to vote. The National Women's Suffrage Association spoke out about the 15th Amendment differently than the American Women's Suffrage Association. Susan B. Anthony thought that if African Americans can vote, then women should. But the American Women's Suffrage Association thought that men should just get the right to vote. She also made a speech on the 15th Amendment and said a woman wants bread, not the ballot. In 1905, she met with President Theodore Roosevelt in Washington, D.C. to fight for an amendment giving women the right to vote. In Susan B. Anthony's later years, she spent the rest of her life working for the Federal Suffrage Amendment. She started to write a bibliography. It was five volumes called The Life and Work of Susan B. Anthony. The last time she saw Anna Shaw, she told her to think, I have more than 60 years of hard struggle for a little liberty than to die without it seems cool. Also, before she she died, attended a convention, her last speech words was, failure is impossible. On March 13, 1906, at age 86, Susan B. Anthony died of heart failure and pneumonia. At the time, only four states had given women the right to vote. 14 years later, The 19th Amendment was passed, giving women the right to vote. Yay! She once said, I declare to you that women must not depend on the protection of men, but must be taught to protect herself. And as there, I take my stand. Susan B. Anthony did not get any rewards but was honored in different ways. She was the first actual woman printed on a circulating coin. On April 2016, Treasury Secretary Jacob Liu said, in 2020 would be the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment. Anthony would be temporarily on the $10 bill. They turned, they turned her house into a museum honoring her. Her birth house was listed on the National Register of Historic Places, and they made her birthday a national holiday to celebrate her birth and woman suffrage. The last thing they did was in 2016, Lovely Warren, the mayor of Rochester, New York, put a great sign next to her grave that said, Dear Susan B., We thought you might like to know that for the first time in history, a woman is running for president, representing a major party. 144 years ago, your illegal vote got you arrested. It took another 40 years for women to finally gain the right to vote. Thank you for paving the way. She had people come up and sign it. Susan B. Anthony will always be remembered as a hero to all women. Now you have heard of women's rights and how we tried to reach new heights if we're all created equal. That's us too. But you will probably not recall that it's not been 
too long at all since we even had the right to cast a vote. Well, well, sure, some men bowed down and called us Miss yeah. Then it's hang the wash out and wash the dishes. Uh-huh. But when the time rolled around to elect a president, what did they say, sister? What did they say? They said, oh, see you later, alligator. And don't forget <laughs> my, my, my mashed potatoes, cause I'm going downtown to cast my vote for president. But we were suffering until suffering. Oh. Not a woman you could vote, no matter what age. Oh. And the night teeth of men struck down that restrictive rule. Oh, yeah. Election day. What a shame, sisters. Then Susan B. Anthony. Yeah. And Julia Howe. Lucretia. Lucretia Ma. And others. They showed us how they carried signs and marched in lines until at long last the law was passed. Oh, we were suffering until suffering. Oh. Not a woman you could vote no matter what age. Then the 19th Amendment struck down that restrictive rule. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 